must say I'm pretty happy with the result after a coat of primer and four coats of black satin. Uh, they turned out amazing. Uh, it is the cheaper way of doing it rather than powder coating. Powder coating will be a lot more durable. However, you've just got to do what you've got to do when you're building a budget scrambler. And that's what I did. And I think they turned out all right. I mean, in the long term, they're never going to last as long as powder coating. But, you know, this will get the build done. It'll be finished a lot sooner and for a lot less money. So I hadn't planned on actually getting tires uh, till way further into the build, um, but I did have to take the old tires off. Um, so I decided what I'll do is just get them painted and get brand new tires uh, fitted for both of them. And what I ended up going with was a Hyder now. Uh, they're a 120 rear and a 100 front. So 100 by 90, 19 front. And the rear is a 120 by 80, 18. Um, so that's the tire size that I went. Um, I really like them. I think they look pretty badass. Um, it's 120. I could have gone to 130 had I stayed with the 16 due to the fact that it's a wider rim. Um, but unfortunately trying to find tires that fit a 16 are so impossible to find here. They just don't make them. A matching set, I mean, like the 16 rear and a 19 front. To find a matching set is like damn near impossible. Once they're on the bike, uh, I'm going to do a pre-test fit. I want to clean these guys up a little bit. Um, they're a little bit sad at the moment. But I'm going to do a test fit, so I'm going to keep them as is and just test the tyre and wheel and make sure it all goes perfectly. Um, shouldn't be any dramas, but I just want to try and see how things look. And then I'll go from there. So let's get the rotors on the rim and throw it on the bike and see what it looks like. I'm really happy with how that's turned out so far and all I've done obviously is the handlebars, the gaiters, painted the forks and painted the wheels and put tires on. Uh, it's really just starting to take shape and I'm going to order some fork oil I've decided. Uh, I'm definitely going to get some fork oil and replace whatever's in there. I don't know how, how it is or how old it is. Like I said I haven't actually ridden this bike yet so I don't know if it's any good but you know I don't think it's going to be that expensive and add too much to the build but it will definitely be worth doing. That is pretty much it for tonight. I'm going to call it a night and uh, leave it there. And there's so many more things that need to get done. Obviously the exhaust, seat, uh, whether I relocate the tank and make the tank come up a bit higher. I will try and get that rear tire on maybe tomorrow. If anybody has any ideas of uh, indicators or a headlight, uh, let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear uh, everyone's ideas, even color schemes, throw your idea in there if you have an idea on something that you, or a scrambler that you have seen. It doesn't have to be a CX, just whatever you've seen and you really like the color schemes. Just let me know. Uh, I am looking for different ideas for the color and which way I'm going to go, whether I'm going to go a black seat or a brown seat and what color I decide to go the tank. So yeah, anyone's got any ideas, just throw a link in the comments below and I'll go and check it out.
really have loved to put a wider tire on the rear of this, but it's a 2.15 uh, wide tire, uh, sorry, rim, and a 120 is about as big as you could go uh, safely. Obviously, you could do a 130 if you wanted to, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, it's not safe to do. I know guys that have done it, not recommended whatsoever. It's not super exciting. Um, I would just like that extra 10 mil in width at the back if I possibly could. But I need to know if there's any other way around this. Um, if anyone knows any tricks or tips, uh, this is a build that I want to involve you guys in. And anyone has any ideas on how to get a, a fatter rear tire on the back of this, um, like the exact same rim, oh, sorry, exact same tire as this, but the one that's 10 millimeters wider will be all the difference is all I wanted. Um, and this is a budget build, so I need to figure out how to do it on a budget. I have heard of people actually drilling the rivets out of these guys. Um, and actually replacing them with bolts and doing something with a bigger rim. I don't know how safe that would be uh, in the long term. It's not something that I really wanted to do. I'm not even sure uh, which rim you actually take to do it with. But any ideas that you come up with or you do know of, let me know. Otherwise, we'll just have to deal with the fact that they're 120s and that's okay. Um, it is a budget scrambler, so let's see what we can make out of it. So in the first video, uh, you would have seen me putting in these little guys. They're basically just silicon. It was just a fix. It was just a quick fix. The process of elimination to try and find out whether those bungs were the problem with why I couldn't get it to run. And I ordered the proper Honda rubber bungs that go inside there, or plugs, whatever you want to call them. I took these out, and as I took these out, they were like about four times the size of that. They were literally, I've left them overnight, so they've actually come back down to their normal size. But obviously the fuel, and they were clear as well. So obviously the fuel has reacted to this or caused it to swell up because it is only just silicon. And they fell out. So I tried to start the bike and I couldn't get it running. It wouldn't run at all. It just was doing the same thing it initially was doing. So as I took these out, I realized that that was the problem. These are swollen up and have fallen out. Yeah, I've put the new ones in. Now I'm just going to use my battery pack as the battery for this and give it a go and see if I can't get it to start. So it would seem as though we have a lot more work to do. Uh, it runs, but extremely rough. Um, I'm feeling as though one of the cylinders is firing a lot better than the other, causing it to just shake a lot. I also feel like I need to replace the fuel that's in there. The fuel that was left in the bottom of the bowl uh, was pretty yellow, just like those, those silicon bungs that I had. So it obviously discolored the fuel, uh, which has polluted the fuel. So I'm assuming until I get rid of all of that out of the system, possibly is done now, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I'll put some fresh fuel in it and give it a go again. So first things first, let's check that it's not just bad fuel. Uh, if it is, then it's an easy fix. Uh, if it's not, then it's a matter of just like looking at those carburetors again and trying to figure out why. So Paris has yet again donated her tank to help out with the uh, problem solving. That is a fresh tank of fuel. I uh, just got that yesterday. So let's give it a wind over and see what happens. Last time I played with it, I can't remember what I did with the mixture screws, if I adjusted them or not. So I'm just going to go back and uh, readjust them back to stock 
uh, which is two and a half turns out, I believe. So I will do that and then give it another go. I've just pulled out the CX carburetors and I found something pretty vital, something that I had missed three times now. Well, actually not three times because I didn't actually pull this part out three times, but I missed it every single time. And I wanted to show you because you possibly could do the same thing. These little guys here are obviously the uh, mixture screws and there's a little rubber o-ring that sits inside the chute where it goes first and then there's the washer then the spring and then you put the needle screw in what i didn't notice was inside there was pretty dark and i didn't use a torch or anything i just kind of stabbed around and couldn't feel anything in there it felt like steel but these little guys had been the old ones have been pushed in and squashed in there and i didn't notice i just found them and i realized that i had that washer that was squashed in there plus the brand new one uh, and I was pretty much and all the other components that go in it as well and I was wondering why it wasn't running correctly I think I found the problem so let's put it all back together put it back on the bike and uh, see how it goes so now I'm gonna put the tank back on the bike fill it up with fuel and plug the battery starter into it and we'll give it another go so this is take four I think take four just for today, anyway. Hopefully uh, that is all it is and we're good to go. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, it's rough, but it works and that's the main thing. So now that I've got it to that stage, uh, what I'll actually do is start working on other things. It obviously needs a lot more work and I get that, like the clutch just before I try to go up the driveway, the first time I took it out and then came back again, it just needed an adjustment. I just literally couldn't get up the driveway. So when I got up here, I made that quick adjustment and the clutch is all good now because I have actually pulled the clutch apart. and. Um, cleaned all the plates and put it back in again so the clutch is good uh, the actual bike itself the tuning side of it hmm. <laughs> as you know as you saw it needs work but now I can start working on the exhaust I can do the seat and the tank and whatever else I've got to do to this thing to turn it into that scrambler tracker or street tracker or street scrambler whatever you want to call it uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it so once all the exhaust is on, the jets are in, the carby air filters are on, then I can start looking at tuning it. But until then, there is really no point.